or like I say, have a disconnect because that seemed to work for me. But the, my best advice would be to just disconnect it. Um, because this installer and this boot process and for the actual installation will get lost. It will simply get lost in the drives. So when you go to format the drive for your installation inside the Mac OS X installer, it doesn't ever populate drive list. I have literally let it sit for four hours and it never came up, it never populated the list. And that is very important to remember. So like I say, if you can, disconnect all extra drives uh, that you don't need. Once this is loaded, we'll go ahead and resume the tape. Okay. So we are now in the Mac OS X installer. Now then, the big thing here is all USB. USB keyboard, USB mouse. Now there are ways you can fudge that and allow it to use PS2, but USB is simply the easiest and easily accessible by most people. So, obviously we're going to select our language, in this case English for me. Alright, well, hello everybody. Uh, so, the camera died last night. Uh, I didn't ever have a full battery charge, so uh, I just decided to go to bed. Um, because I didn't feel like disconnecting all my webcam equipment and putting it on the laptop and whatnot. So, uh, here is the second half of the video. So, I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and boot everything up here now. But, uh, so, yeah, sorry. I did start the video last night, battery did die, I just don't have, like I said, the cable to connect my camcorder to the charger right now, so I'll be getting that one of these days so I don't have to use the battery. Anyways, uh, so, on with the show. Alright, well, uh, got OS X all booted. Uh, one thing I have actually kind of noticed, which is a little weird, boot time will vary. Um... This last time, it probably took 20 minutes to boot, 20, 30 minutes to boot. I don't know, I didn't really time it, I was doing other things, but um, last night it booted in 5 minutes, 5, 10 minutes, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Nothing different system-wise, um, just, I don't know, but uh. I was wrong in the fact that sometimes it will crash, the boot will crash. For some reason, the CD-ROM will just uh, stop responding, but you will get a message on the screen, I.O. device failure or I.O. device timeout, something that effect. It'll do it a few times. So, if that happens, reboot, and it'll work. So, that right there. Alright, so here's the installer. Go ahead and select our language, which is English. And you will also notice while this is booting that, yeah, the computer is all torn apart. Like I say, I've got pretty much nothing that I don't need connected connected. That includes my top two CD-ROMs. Those are just disconnected. And my secondary hard drive right there. That is also disconnected. I only have the SATA drive right there plugged in. 
and that black CD-ROM has only thing plugged in in the system. It does seem like it's reading a lot slower. I'm almost wondering. It does. It is working, as you can see. It's almost acting like it's reading at a lower read rate. I don't know. That could be it versus full speed, but. Alright, so, welcome screen, uh, go ahead and first go to continue here so I can show you a few things. Uh, since I do not have my Macintosh, first degree, since I don't have my Macintosh hard drive that I put in there, not Macintosh special, it's just one, since I don't have my Mac OS X hard drive plugged in, it's only got my SATA hard drive with my two different partitions. So, you will see that you know, these exclamation points are on there, that means they're NTFS, read-only, these are unusable. So we'll just pretend, though, that my other drive is in there and readable. We go ahead and we'll go back. And then we go to Utilities. And Disk Utility. This is where we do the partitioning and the formatting to actually install OS X on the hard drive or partition. And if it's stuck right here on gathering disk information, this is where I was telling you that you need to have nothing else in the drives. Because this is where it will just stick, and it will just sit on gathering disk information for literal hours. But since I've remedied that issue, it's not a case or an issue for me anymore. So, uh, once again, your drive would be listed up here. Mine's not there, but we'll just select my secondary partition here for the sake of... And then go ahead and click on Erase, it's the button right up here. That'll give us different options here, the volume format. We're going to select Mac OS Extended Journal. That is how we will format it, change the name to Leopard with capital L, because most forums, they run on that partition name there, it's just easiest. You can name whatever you want, essentially, just remember it. Um, then you'd go ahead and hit erase. Obviously I'm not going to erase my partition, but just hit that. Once it finishes, it'll be it'll just stay here. Go up here to the little red dot, close. Take it back here, go to continue. Once it's finished, you will see the leopard drive right here. Or wherever, essentially. You go ahead and select it, and you'd go to continue. The installer would then run. It would give you the option for different packages to install. You select, you just click customize, select, deselect what you want to install, don't want to install, etc, etc. And then the installer will run. The installer does take approximately one hour to complete. Uh, a little bit more, a little bit less, I don't know really, because uh, the timer kind of jumps around at one point, you know, it said like four hours, but then it dropped back down to, you know, 53 minutes and 20 minutes, you know, so I don't know, but it takes approximately an hour to install. Um, once it finishes, It'll either ask you to reboot or it'll just reboot on its own. I can't quite remember. You can leave the disk in, I think I, I did, and it'll attempt to boot off of the hard drive, or it'll att it'll attempt to boot off of whichever drive your BIOS is set to first. So if it's a secondary hard drive, you're going to have to go in and tell it to boot off the secondary hard drive unless you have done it already. Like say, I just use my F11 bootloader menu that allows me to select. With, if I want to do it off the CD, if I want to do it off my main hard drive, my secondary hard drive, etc., etc., easiest for me. However, you want to do it, whatever. If it's your main part. If it's your main drive, obviously uh, the Darwin loader will come up at this point, or is supposed to. It'll give you the option to boot into Windows, or to boot off, or to boot into Leopard. I have not tried this, so if that doesn't work, I don't know. Um, but it should. So.